Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm gonna to be looking at the aperture function on your camera and how it relates to the exposure when you're taking an image. There are multiple factors that are really important to understand about exposure when you're shooting on a manual film camera so that you can be really confident that whatever you're gonna take a picture of is gonna come out looking exactly the way that you want it to. There are three main factors that you have control over when you're deciding the exposure of the image you're about to shoot. And these are the shutter speed of your camera, the aperture of your lens, and the ISO of your film. In a previous video, I already tackled ISO on its own so that you can understand how that functions. And today, I'm going to move on and talk about how the aperture of your lens works and how that impacts the image that you're taking. So with most camera lenses out there for analog gear, they're set up like this. At the front here is a ring that turns and this controls your focus. Now the aperture ring is usually located behind the focus ring and it looks like this. This is your aperture ring and it controls the opening inside your lens that allows the amount of light in. So if we turn this, the ring will usually click into different spots along these numbers here. These numbers are aperture values, or as they're more frequently referred to as f-stops. This lens has a variety of f-stop numbers around the ring here, and they start at 1.8 and go all the way up to 16, which is a pretty common range of f-stop values to have on your camera lens. Inside your lens is an iris, and this opens or closes depending on the f-stop number that you choose. Now a higher f-stop value, such as f8, or f11 or f16 will result in your iris having a very small opening. Now this limits the amount of light that your lens will let in when you're exposing your film. A lower f-stop value such as f4 or f2.8 will result in an iris that has a much larger opening. And this of course allows much more light into your lens when you're taking your picture. So to recap, a higher number means a smaller opening and a lower number means a larger opening. So one of the most important things about the aperture and the opening is how it affects the actual image you're about to take. And the aperture controls what is called the depth of field. So basically the depth of field in an image is how much of it is in focus and how much of it is out of focus. A very wide depth of field means that a lot of your image will be in focus. So both something very close to you as well as something very far away will both be in focus when you have a very wide depth of field. A very shallow depth of field means that only a small amount of your image will be in focus. So images like these when your subject is in focus but your background is out of focus is when you have a shallow depth of field. So the f-stop number that you choose on your lens controls the depth of field and will help you determine how your image looks. A very low f-stop number like f2.8 will have a very wide open iris which means a very shallow depth of field. A very high f-stop number like f16 will result in a much smaller iris opening and will also have a very wide depth of field which means that more of your image will be in focus. Just think about it like this. A small f-stop number means a small depth of field and a large f-stop number means a large depth of field. Now when we're determining exposure we measure light in what is called a stop. A stop of light is either double your light or half your light. Now stops are also something that I talked about in the ISO video because ISO, aperture, and shutter speed all control the amount of stops of light that you're letting into your image. But right now I'm just gonna talk about how stops of light and aperture work together. So if I say that I will increase my exposure by one stop, it means that I'm going to let in double the amount of light from my previous exposure. And if I say that I'm going to decrease my exposure, it means that I'm going to let only half the amount of light in from my previous exposure. So when we're choosing f-stop values, we use the phrase stopping up or stopping down. Stopping up your exposure means to increase the amount of light that you're letting in and stopping down means to decrease the amount of light that you're letting in. So you're basically stopping up in terms of sizing up the opening of your iris, or stopping down in terms of closing down the opening of your iris. For f-stop values on your lens, you stop up or stop down by going one full turn to the next number on your lens. If I go from f4 and open my iris up to f2.8 instead, that means that I've increased the amount of light that my lens is letting in by one full stop, which is double the amount from my previous exposure. But it has decreased my depth of field. So increasing your f-stop number means that less light will come into your lens, but your depth of field will increase. And decreasing your 
f stop number means that more light will come into your lens, but your depth of field will decrease. It is really important to know how these numbers work, and it can be really useful when you're getting into film and starting to understand manual exposure, especially if you haven't done it before or don't have any experience, even on the digital side of things. Film aperture and digital aperture are the same thing, and the skills that you have from digital will transfer to film if you already have an understanding of how this sort of works. Now, in an upcoming video, I'll also be breaking down the shutter speed function on your camera so that you can understand how that works as well and how that also controls the number of stops of light that you let in during an exposure. Then I can take all the information about ISO, aperture, and shutter speed and put them all together and look at how they all work in unison to create that perfect exposure when you're taking pictures with film. Thank you so much for watching and checking this out and I really hope that this has helped you guys out and learn a little bit more about understanding manual exposure on these film cameras. It will help you to start getting really nice images that you can be confident about when shooting so that when you get those rolls of film back from the lab, it's not gonna be a big surprise. Subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post all sorts of videos every week about different formats and exposure basics like these, talking about cameras, cinematography, and photography, and just all these formats that I love so much. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.